Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're talking about note repeat. This is found in the perform tab and this is kit wide. So you get one set of performance options for each one of your four agents. It's a little bit similar to the MIDI FX options, but they operate at the pad level. The note repeat stuff operates at the kit level. If we find and press the secret hidden activate button, then we get all this stuff. And what you've basically got is eight different configurable variations of repeating patterns that can be applied to every note on the kit. So variation one is currently set to uh, quarter notes and it's configured to be triggered by pressing the C5 key. So if I press and hold C5 down, you can see it on the lower keyboard. Now every note that I play on the kit is gonna be repeated every quarter note. If I press and hold D5 instead, it's going to play semitones. And here's some triplets, all the way up to the fastest, 30 second triplets. Each one of those speed offsets can be set to whatever you want. So by default, you typically get this uh, quarter note up to 32 triplets. That's the standard kind of default pattern you're going to see. But you can actually change each of them to any option you want. And you can double click in this little box and type it in explicitly if you want. You can also, there's another uh, hidden button here, which allows you to turn the offsets into time instead. Go all the way up to five seconds. And you see those two things are independent. It doesn't matter what millisecond speed I set. When I go back to tempo based, it goes back to my quarter note. You can also set any of those triggers you want by clicking little up and down arrows or typing in explicitly. It's pretty obvious stuff. So if we head back to variation number one and have a look at this quarter note and just see what it's doing. If I press and hold that key down, now every single note I play on the pad, on the kit, sorry, is gonna get repeated at that speed. And then just by, I'm gonna hold my, um, my drum key down change variation triggers and you see that I can just vary between all of those really easily. If you've got sync engaged it means if there's a pattern or song playing in the background then the note repeat will sync to it. So I'll just get this uh, drum rhythm running in the background and now do exactly the same thing. Everything is synced. It doesn't really matter what I do. So because everything is synced to the underlying rhythm, that's why it's on a tab called Perform. It's really a performance-based thing where you get your groove or your kit or your pattern or whatever's going in the background, you get that up and running. And then you perform an overlaid drum kit on the top of it using these various trigger offsets. In addition to being able to trigger these variations from keys, you can also do it from controllers. So I've got my controllers set up. I've got eight um, non-latching buttons on my keyboard. So I press button number one. You can see if I press it and hold it down, it, uh, it lights that number one variation up. So that's exactly the same as playing the keys. Other than that, you know, it's exactly identical functionality. I'm just pressing the different non-latching buttons on my keyboard. Low key and high key refer to the range over which note repeat is enabled. So if I set low key to E1, now any notes on the kit, for instance, the kick all the way down on C1, I can hold some trigger keys down. The kick is only ever going to play a single note. Whereas as soon as I get up to E1, that's the first note that repeats. So that's pretty basic stuff. We've also got this uh, velocity controller option. At the moment, with it being set to 127, everything I press on the drum kit is going to be played at 127. So I'll hold my um, D5 down again and play a note. I'm going to play it as quietly as I can. It still plays at maximum volume. If I set velocity controller to velocity and do exactly the same thing, play the note as quietly as I can, you can just about hear it in the background. It's now playing every note at the volume I've told it to. And then we can set that to after touch or MIDI controllers. It's pretty basic. Go into the after touch and it gets louder. 
Now if I just head back to velocity, which is the standard setting, if I ever use note repeat, this is where I'm gonna be. This basically means whatever I play, whatever key I play the velocity at, that's what the notes are gonna repeat at. That's just your starting position. From there on, you can then apply um, up to 32 steps of varying velocity. And we do that in the window below. So if I pick this little arrow up and drag it to the right, and create a downward slope. Now I'll play a loud note. And it varies in the velocity over that range. So the first note is gonna determine the starting velocity. From that point onwards, it applies this mask. So it's a modulating mask to whatever I've asked. So if I play a, a really quiet note, everything gets progressively quieter from that point. It doesn't just like on step number two, jump up to 110 or whatever. Now, in addition to being able to move this curtain and draw any kind of shape we want, we've also got lots of flexibility over this um, pattern editor. You can turn individual columns on or off. You can drop this little arrow down to get a whole host of different uh, pre-configured steps for you. So here's a, a just a simple ramping crescendo over 12 steps. And there's all sorts of stuff in between. You can also apply swing to it. And everything that I just did then applies to exactly and only variation three. If I click to any of the other variations, then it go, they're going to default back to their original position. Now you can copy settings from one pad onto another, but it will also paste the, um, the tempo offset as well. So then you'll have to reset that to whatever you want it to be. If I just draw a manual graph in again, just show you there's some little functions down at the bottom. You can reverse the entire pattern and you can duplicate it and then do whatever you want with it afterwards. And then you've got these little forwards and arrow, uh, forwards and backwards arrows. If I make the first four bars maximum and then press arrow forwards, you can see that they've moved, all of the bars have moved forwards by one. But this tall bar here is gonna wrap around to come round back to the beginning again. So you never throw information away. It just cycles round like an escalator. And obviously reverse gets you back the other way. I'll just head back to a simple pattern again and start playing a note on my drum kit. So this is the B1 bass sound and you can hear it with the descending velocities. If I introduce an F1 tom as well, it's gonna do both of those things at the same time. Let's play the, the tom a little bit louder. There we go. Now that's all very well and good. You can have any number of kit pieces all performing the note repeat simultaneously. If you click the mono button, then it will only ever trigger uh, from one pad. So I'll do exactly the same thing. Get my bass going. Now I'm gonna introduce the tom and it immediately cuts the bass off. It basically puts your drum kit in solo performance mode. It doesn't stop an underlying pattern playing in the background. It's just the note triggers that I'm sending in are all mono. Everything that we've just talked about with velocity there can also be applied to pitch, but in order to do so, it is a little bit fiddly, so please bear with me. If I turn the pitch mode on, the first thing that you'll see is a new function has appeared. There's a MIDI controller mapping here but it doesn't matter if I set this to modulation and have kind of this kind of business. So I want to hear some kind of pitch sweep. If I play my bass sound, well, I'm still getting the velocity descent in the background because these things are both applying at the same time, but we're not hearing any pitch change. In order to hear a pitch change, you need to configure the pad itself to be aware of pitch change. 
In other words, we need to head over to the edit tab and in our pitch options, set up some sort of pitch envelope. What do we want to happen with the pitch envelope over time? What's the, what's the envelope shape like? So I'll just temporarily switch to a different pad that doesn't have any of that stuff um, configured on it and play my bass note. There you can hear, hear it's constant. But now that I've configured the pad to have an intrinsic pitch envelope, you can hear it. Here's my um, modulation wheel. So that's now configured for pitch envelope. When I head back to my uh, D5 pattern, which is the one that I drew the descending pitch curve on, that pitch envelope is now, it's basically gonna virtually move the modulation wheel according to the shape you see on the screen. Okay, so there's all sorts of stuff going on there. I'd left the swing settings on. I still had my velocity um, descending slope in the background. Then I've got my pitch curve. All of that stuff is being applied simultaneously, but only on the one variation pad that I've actually configured that pitch curve for. All of the others, just press D sharp five and there's C sharp five. None of these have got any pitch mapping set for them. So they're all gonna play at constant pitch as opposed to the D5, which has that kind of stuff. Now, once you've configured all of that, and you can see there's a, there's a hell of a lot of variation in there, you can output that entire thing. This is all just simple MIDI data. So if I get the song recording in the background, I get this pattern outputting. So it's now gonna record itself into this track. There's swinging stuff going on and all sorts of craziness. But everything that I just recorded there, not perhaps my finest performance of all time, but it's absolutely fine for the purposes of demonstrating that all of that data just got recorded. about to start over here. You can even see the color shading of the velocity bars as it gets quieter. So this is really designed to be a performance tool. It's, it's on the, a tab called Perform. So the idea is that you configure each of your variations to the velocity and pitch settings that you want and then as you hold your different trigger keys down, you get to play the drum, the drum kit, and have all of these different kind of repeating effects triggering in the background. Right up at the top right hand corner, you've got a little drop down uh, button that gives you options for presets. So this is entire suites of variation blocks. So every one of the eight variation pads has variations, both tempo and velocity maps pre-configured in them but you can also save your own. Once you've got settings that you like, maybe velocity maps that you want, then you can create them uh, and save them in your user library, and then they'll appear up at the top. So that's the note repeat page covered. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. You'll be sure not to miss my other content. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.